I'm from Russia and for me it's very interesting for us to record something from your father about his memory from the USSR and you can any kind of feeling of racism in uh, about his uh, his studies in Russia in Soviet Union? No, I mean my father was really lucky. He's one of the first people who came to Soviet Union in the um, uh, late sixties. So he had a wonderful time. He didn't experience. I mean, he experienced racism, but not on such a violent way, which now happens in Russia, uh, because in the Soviet Union the rules were really strict about equality. So he was very protected by law and order. So he had a wonderful time, he was very happy, he studied Russian for a year and then he could do studies of his choice for free with free room and board and he chose medicine. So um, he had an amazing uh, seven years there. Yeah, he was very happy. And he met my mother, so. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a good perspective. I know for later for students it, it, it was much harder because the first group they were like an animality and they were, you know, fun. But yeah, my, my cousin actually studied in the 90s and she literally said to me, whatever happens, I'm never going back there, whatever happens. So she had a completely um, horrendous and different experience. Yeah, fortunately. Hi, thanks so much for uh, sharing. Um, it was a really good insight, like when I was young, for me it was also normal that there was black beat that's in the class. And then along the years you sort of start to learn more and um, but what do you think now, because I think the, one of the solutions would be to do something at the schools to actually change yeah. it there. Yeah. But what do you think now is the best idea so far uh, at the upcoming uh, anniversary of uh, Sinterklaas? Yeah. What's a, a good well, solution that maybe we can implement or uh, well, to accelerate? I think it's important if you have kids in school to really reinforce um, um, how important it is to learn about Dutch history. I mean, the colonial history of the Netherlands is brutal. It's a formed year of severe aggression, making tons of money over the backs of people when I was in Suriname. And I saw, like, there's a road from Paramaribo to Nikiri, which is about 30, 40 kilometers long. And all the whole area around it has been stripped from all the um, trees and everything. From like, it's, I mean, it's a, a tropical climate. And rice um, fields have been put there. So if you imagine that it was done manually by people, that for like 200 years people had to cut off all the trees there and make, water it and turn it into rice fields. If you just start thinking of that like, oh my God, how did people do that? You know, how many people did it take to do that? That's just one image I saw because I was there traveling through the country. I mean, that's not taught in school. And um, I also write in my book about going to the Maurits house with my daughter because she had to see some different museums and I thought, well, let's go outside of Amsterdam. And walking around the Maurits Museum, Maurits who literally invented the, the transatlantic triangle slave trade and there's no word about that. It's only about that he was such an amazing ruler, that he brought about change there and he brought people um, artwork back and he commissioned art and, you know, he built this and this amazing house. But he invented... <laughs> that business idea, and even my daughter was asking like, but those were people, right? I mean, I, you don't even see it in the museum. So we have such a blind spot for history. So it's easy to look at a figure and think, oh, ha, ha, funny, well, it's not really black, yeah, well, I don't know what it is, but it's funny. If you know the history, I mean, we would never do this with, with other, uh, like, for instance, Second World War, if you look what happened, we would never do this with, for instance, Jewish people, thank God, because we so know the history. With our colonial history, eh, it's over. So what's the problem? So that's what maybe say. we have to like re-educate the history teacher of the Netherlands. Absolutely, and I think as white parents, you have such a power to 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 stress that. In our school, it was literally a white mother who said, "We're done. I will not accept this anymore." She, you know, used her white privilege to kind of. You know, to take a stance so that I didn't, and the, the, the parents of color didn't, weren't the one at the front row who would get, you know, oh yeah, of course you're against it because you're black. She made an effort to really um, uh, talk about the issue. So I think it would be great if, yeah, white parents demand, <laughs> and you have them right, you have the power, uh, more history lessons because then any child would be like, why, huh? No, doesn't make any sense, just like me. Yeah. So. Yeah, go ahead. 
thank you for sharing your story. I was actually having a friend over from Hungary who was asking the question, where and how are Dutch people, children, are educated about colonial history? She has been just in the Trophy Museum. And I was actually wondering, indeed, as living here as an expat or a foreigner, uh, that not native uh, Dutch person, where would you point um, even young people or young adults uh, to go to to get information about the Dutch colonial yeah. history and how the Dutch colonial history is told in the Netherlands? No, it's told really badly. I mean, it's hardly told. My daughter goes to a really good school, and even there, it's literally one chapter, and her teacher doesn't even use that chapter. So, can you imagine? She hasn't literally learned anything. So if you just rely on the schools here, you can forget about it. Um, there are museums you can go to in Amsterdam, the, uh, the, the Shipment Museum, uh, Scheepsvaart Museum. They had some really good um, uh, expositions, and I think still there you can, you can get information. And now in Vlissingen, uh, Zeeland, uh, was the biggest slave port, uh, was the biggest port, they're opening the archives now, so you can uh, read things. I mean, it's very painful. It's, I mean, I did it, and it's 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 very um, painful to read about people literally being sold as cattle, uh, where everything is written from a perspective of a business point, and what it how it affects the business. If people are sick, they're not even called people. That's where the, the N word comes from. You know, they're not even considered people. So it's 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 very painful to look at that. Uh, but there is um, uh, you can do it. What I would definitely recommend to do is do the Black Heritage Tour in. Amsterdam by Jennifer Tosh. That's really excellent. She talks about uh, uh, black presence in Amsterdam and from you know a black person's perspective, which is interesting and, and beautiful, and she can answer a lot of questions. And there's a lot of good literature. Um, I would recommend, I don't know if it's translated in English, the Hofstaat by Abel van der Vult, but definitely Gloria Becker or Philomena Asset, they both write in English about the Dutch colonial um, mindset and the innocent image that we, yeah, that we have as Dutch people. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. I was wondering if, uh, about your stance on the uh, Tropen Museum. So what's, what, what is your uh, perspective about it? Because I come from Portugal, which is a country with a very strong and terrible yeah. uh, colonial history. Yeah. And back in Portugal, we don't talk about this place, but it's a taboo, it's way worse than here. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy to go to the Tropen Museum and find, find a place where, well, at least there yeah. was something, there was a history being told from, okay, um, colonialism existed, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. Yeah. Even if in a general way, as opposed to Portugal, where people fight and, and say, no, 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 we, still, we should still be um, ruling in Africa because... Mm -hmm. We're better. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. Why well, are you still uh, so <laughs> The rest is still moving. Yeah. So it's funny because I'm here, I feel okay, we are a step further. Like, yeah, it's a tiny yeah. step. I mean, I think the name in itself is such a euphemism, Tropical Museum. I mean, why don't you just call it what it is? Very brutal colonial history museum. Okay. Um, slave <laughs> trade museum. You know, dehumanization for centuries of people of color museum. The Tropical Museum makes it sound almost like, you know, Nice to go and check it out. So, um, yeah, it's a start, but that start has been here since the 50s. So I think it's time to take more steps. It's, it's, it, it would be great if this was like last century. But now I think uh, there's more to be done. And there's a, there's a, you have a very amazing group, the Decolonize uh, Museum, group of uh, uh, young artists and um, art curators who are and activists who are doing amazing work to change things. But still, like, it's, 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 so, it's so difficult that like I'm um, going to meet, uh, I don't know if you know, Reddy at a lot. She's a uh, British writer, uh, African-British writer, who wrote actually my, sort of the same book, but then from a British perspective, uh, why I don't talk to white people about race anymore. And we have a conversation together for the museum night. So great, we're both invited, we're going to be interviewed. And then I saw the poster for the museum night. I don't know if you've noticed that poster. And then I'm like, okay. So I have to talk about that. I can't sit there with her, have a great conversation with her, you know, go somewhere. No, we have to explain again that this is not correct. You know, we're put in that position, it was already told us, yeah, just know that the audience who's coming is mostly white, so you will have to explain certain things again. 
So yeah, I'll do that, but you know, that's where we are. So yeah, no, I'm not so um, completely happy with the talk. <laughs> Yes. Your question. <laughs> Sorry, one quick final question. We're really running out of time. So go ahead. Um, in my perspective, you're a social a a activist, and we owe you a huge respect to all these people you mentioned for putting it out there and get all the shit out of you because it is a lot that you get to. Uh, we are designers, and it's our job to change the world yeah. a bit, in, like in the next level, that the energy that you create that we turn it into a shape. So what can, what would you like us to do? Or not to, of course, feel it, but what yeah. would you like us to do and go out and make well, it? Well, it would be great if you're, as a designer, for instance, with that poster, that every, any company would be like, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. But people don't see it, right? Yeah. Strange. So, yeah, I mean, <coughs> if I can, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, I, I mean, I went to theater school. <laughs> so if I can find out reading lists and everything, everybody else can. So yeah, it's a luxury, just like in the little clip, you don't have to think about it if you're in front row, and sometimes you can decide to do something nice for uh, for uh, Flugtelinge. You know, I'm gonna work on Lesbos for a month, and uh, maybe I'll think about, the, you know, I'll, I'll help somebody give money. You can do that, that's wonderful. That's such a luxury. But if you really want things to change, if you really tell your people, your friends, your colleagues that you're for, an equal, for equal rights, yeah, you have to do more. I can't make it any nicer than that. So you have to say no to certain people to work with, or really, you know, be the whining person at every table, at every discussion, to explain why something is not nice or funny or acceptable. And that's what we can do as designers. That's what definitely Start designers can do. Yeah, that's what I mean. For me, the biggest heroes are people who are not in a position of power who do that. I mean, I get letters and mails from parents who have to fight that fight every day for their kids or at their job, just at a meet at a, you know. Not amazing high end job, but still are trying to make sure. I mean, yeah, and that's what it takes. But if you're in a position of power, if people need your design or need your work, you really have, yeah, in a position of power, you, you can really put your foot down and, and, and that will bring about change. You saw, like with RTL, just saying, we're not going to do Black Beat anymore, that's it. We'll just, they just put out one statement, did one interview, that was it. Amazing. You know, that, that's such a strong way of uh, just sending the message, not even the discussion about it. That would be great. So people in power, yeah, you have so many tools.